Hello everyone, UXW Bill here. In this video I'm going to talk about portable television. There are many, many different kinds of portable televisions, almost as many different types as there are programs to watch. There are solid state portable televisions, vacuum tube type portable televisions, televisions that have black and white picture tubes, color picture tubes, color or black and white LCDs, and there are still more display types beyond that. Modern portable televisions can sometimes use organic LED displays. You can even divide portable televisions into those that you can carry along with you, such as this Panasonic, or televisions such as this Emerson or this TMK that are capable of running on battery power. No matter what kind of technology makes them work, portable televisions have existed almost since the dawn of practical television receivers. However, advances in technology such as the transistor and later the integrated circuit all help to make the portable television ever more practical, especially when the advent of battery-powered portable televisions came along. The television that I'm going to be discussing in this video is the Sony Watchman, which debuted in the 1980s. Now the early Watchman televisions all had a very unique feature that they shared. That unique feature is the picture tube. At first glance, the Sony Watchman TV has a screen like any other. And in fact, to the uninitiated eye, it would appear to be almost a conventional black and white portable television set. But if you look a little more closely, you can see that the screen is actually curved. Why is that? Well, let's have a look at Sony's user manual. I picked this television up at the Goodwill, and although it's had a few boo-boos over the years, and it looks like someone might have been painting around it and managed to spill a couple of dots of paint, it has survived very well, and it is in excellent working condition. Plus, the previous owners were careful to store almost all of the original Sony documentation with the TV. This particular Watchman is the FD40A model, which has, if I'm not mistaken, the largest screen of any Watchman TV ever produced. Now getting back to the subject at hand of the unique picture tube, here is the operator's manual for the television. Sony does as good a job as anyone can of explaining just what makes the tube unique with an excellent illustration. And as far as I know, this particular picture tube is very unique in that no other television manufacturer ever made a television that worked in the same way this one does. Right here is a picture of what the actual picture tube inside the Watchman TV looks like. As you can see, it has things in common with conventional picture tubes. It has an electron gun at the back that emits electrons that are later beamed to a phosphor screen, which lights up when struck by electrons. It has a deflection yoke, just as regular televisions do, to drive the electron beam and make it scan in both the horizontal and vertical directions the phosphor screen so that a picture can be seen. But as you can see, the key difference is the location of the phosphor screen. Where a conventional TV places this very near to the front of the tube, Sony's special picture tube in the Watchman TV places it at the very back of the tube. So when you're looking at the phosphor screen, it's actually quite a bit further back and bent at an angle to allow the electron beam to scan it. And if you look way back up inside this picture tube, which you may or may not be able to see, you can actually see the electron guns. It doesn't show up very well on the camera. Now, as with any other television of the early 1980s, there are common features to be seen between this and regular sets. There is a pull-out antenna, a UHF and VHF band selector, a power button that lets you turn the power on and off, and something that other portable televisions would have had, a special carrying strap. You also get controls to adjust contrast, brightness, and vertical hold. There's an external antenna connector, and rather surprisingly, an AV input, which did not usually show up on many televisions until much later in the 1980s and 1990s, when having a direct video input that bypassed the tuner of the TV became more popular. 
There is a speaker at the top of the television's case just above the picture tube. A tuning dial to help you find the stations that you want to watch. Note the omission of an AM or FM radio, which some other portable televisions of the time did feature. And it's a Sony sticker. Sony used that particular marketing for a very long time to imply that their products were much higher quality than those of the competition. And there was certainly a time when that was true. There's a tuning adjustment and a volume adjustment. And then down here on the lower side of the television set is an input for a power adapter. This particular watchman can also be operated from 4C batteries. And the Sony user's guide tells us that from, from those batteries, the runtime is approximately four hours. However, longer watching may be possible if you're willing to accept a shrunken picture and reduced audio performance. When this television was new, there was also an add-on rechargeable battery available for sale. However, I would imagine that at this point in time, here in 2012 when I'm making this video, all of those batteries have ceased to work and probably many of them have been thrown away or recycled. Rounding out the features and controls on the exterior of the TV is an earphone connector for private listening. More advanced portable televisions and those with more features or larger screens were of course more expensive than their more pedestrian counterparts and so a television such as this one would have been fairly expensive back when it was new. However, the digital TV conversion or fiasco, if you prefer that term as I do, has left these televisions unable to receive most signals unless you still have a low power translator or other exempt television station in your area. Or if, of course, your country has not yet ceased analog television broadcasts. However, that makes these televisions, the ones that escape the recycling centers and various other places, very cheap to acquire, easy to find, and still quite useful if you know how to hook them up so that they can receive modern TV programming. And of course they work just as well as they ever did with devices such as this VCR that still output an analog television signal. So let's go ahead and see what it's like to watch television on this Sony Watchman FD40 portable TV. Unfortunately, the demonstration that I'm about to conduct of this television probably won't do a very good job of conveying what it's like to actually watch this TV in person. Not only will the room lighting to some extent interact with what the camera sees, but the camera will have a slightly different interpretation than our eyes would when it comes to watching this television screen. Plus, the videotape source that I have handy actually seems to be a bit dark and the controls for contrast and brightness on this television do not have enough range to really make it look as though it should. Thank you for watching and feel free to leave a comment if you have one.